Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at flying the Edgley Optica. This uh, strange looking bubble, looks like somebody tried to take a Bell helicopter front and stick it on an airplane body, limited edition experimental British plane. Ready to go. So first things first, I climb into this cockpit, it's, <laughs> it's interesting, you know, and I just sit here looking, my brain immediately expects this thing to be some kind of a helicopter, not to be some kind of an airplane, but hey, you know, it works pretty well. Coming over on this side, you know, you can see these big glass window doors, you got the little handle on the side that you can go ahead and close, a little hatch on the side if you want to open it, and um, it is pretty good visibility, I will definitely, definitely tell you that, and as a matter of fact, I like flying this thing in VR, and that's one of the reasons I picked it up, because this window is amazing for looking down at the world below low you. Now, unfortunately for us, the documentation for this aircraft is a little limited. Uh, we did get some stuff that explained how to do things, like turning the kitty cat as well as the doogie on and off. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But unfortunately, the real documentation in this one, for those of you who all uh, pick this up, is really built into these checklists, which kind of describe a lot of what's kind of going on in this and kind of how to set up the different options in it without a lot of explanation, unfortunately. So we're going to do a little bit of that. We're going to do a little bit of what I found from experimenting. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, um, if you want to choose your canine companions here, we got this little switch up at the tippy top. I can do one of these and pop a kilo, kind of looking at the thing, and make him lying down on the ground. I can look at bringing Mato the cat. Uh, Mato is kind of pe uh, peace out there. I can do both, which of course is the correct thing to do here, as they're just sort of chilling and they're looking so cute. I don't know. just want to kind of rub him just kind of right here between his ears and just watch him go, don't. Of course, this guy loves flying this thing. So I flip them upside down. All right, with that taken care of, um, what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to our main console. We're going to make sure all of our circuit breakers are good, which they are. We're going to flip on the battery and master switch here. Uh, that's uh, pretty much the first step with anything. Incredibly, this is going to turn on avionics also. It's going to go through its PFT down here for the automatic pilot. The dog always perks up when you do that. Don't worry about it too, too much. Uh, like I said, nothing's too, too scary. We have this fun little starter button. Um, don't worry about that starter button because we actually have a hidden starter button on this one. That's just part of the starting experience on this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go pop on these strobes and the nav lights just to kind of let everybody know that we're about to get started. Then I'm going to go up above my head and you've got this lovely little key here. This is your actual ignition key. So I'm going to leave that one alone for now and come down here for a second. First thing we want to do is we want to make sure we got the uh, brake set. In this case, you just kind of pull it up. It looks kind of like a car brake. Uh, next thing we're going to do, we're going to confirm a pitch trim is okay. We're going to take our mixture. We're going to pop it all the way to rich. And we're also going to take the throttle and crack it just a teeny tiny bit. doesn't take a lot. Coming back here, we're going to make sure our fuel selector is in the both position. Now, we have pretty good sized fuel tanks on this, but this is not a very fast aircraft, as you're going to see, which is... It is what it is, but for some reason, somebody uh, changed my tank. Who siphoned our tanks? All right, we're good. So that's all set. No, that's all set. That's all set. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop on the fuel pump for the purposes of starting this. Uh, like I said, it's pretty straightforward with this one. So we're going to come up here to the key. We're going to click one, two, three, and we're going to go right to the starting position. Give it a few moments, and it usually catches lickety splits, which is exactly what it did. So we're going to go ahead and set this to about 1,000 RPM. And once we have it at 1,000 RPM, we can go ahead and take the mixture handle, and we can start pulling it back just a bit here to give it a little bit more of a uh, leaner idle here to keep the nasty nasty lid out of things afterwards what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on our alternator we're going to make sure everything so shows that we have both electricity as well as charging which we do and then of course the last thing we like to do is pop off the fuel pump it served its purpose uh, we can have it if we need it later on but for now we don't really need it for anything Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go set up all my instrumentation here. This looks good. This looks good. This guy is set pretty well. We'll set up an initial altitude of about 1,000 here. Going behind me, everything's all set. We've got our safety belt. I love a little first aid uh, kit right there and a little fire extinguisher. Like I said, it, it, it's a neat helicopter. I mean, airplane. I mean, I don't know anymore. So what I would like to do is I like to go ahead and close the other guy's door, however. Why'd you leave that open, jerk? All right, so let's get going. So one of the weird things with this particular aircraft is the fact that you are pretty far ahead of your landing gear. Like, it doesn't look like it until you try it. But the distance here is exaggerated. And that's exactly what I mean when we start rolling here. Why are there so many, 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 many cars and trucks here? So let's go ahead and head over to the runway here. Now, the book doesn't say much about flaps, so we could use probably a couple notches of flaps if we're dealing with a well, very, very short runway. But again, it's completely uh, dependent on you know, the situation and everything you have along those lines. Come sneak up here. We're going to pop right up here. The runway is I can't believe how many vehicles are at this airport. This airport would never... What is he doing? <laughs> um... That's entertaining. <laughs> so what we'll do now is uh, we'll get ready for our takeoff. We'll get our little pre-takeoff checklist thingy going on here. We'll set our mixture to the nice rich option. We're going to go ahead and push that throttle forward. Get ourselves about 1,700 revolutions. That looks pretty good right there. We're going to go check to see all of our instruments being inside the green ranges, which is exactly what I see now. Pop up above our head. We're going to go ahead and tap the key to the left. 
and we're just expecting to see a small drop in RPM. That was about 75. We're going to tap the key back to the right, and then it should come back up to 1700. Now we're going to tap it two, two times. We're going to go left, left. And that should go ahead and also lose it. Oh, apparently we are passed right past the both setting there. So unfortunately, you got to be a little more careful than I just was. We went one too far there. There we go. And that, of course, would show that we have the same drop on that one as well. Now we're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and uh, give ourselves, like I said, a little notch of victory flaps here. Uh, these are split flaps, so you don't want to use too much of them during takeoff. They tend to make things a little involved. And like I said, you usually don't need them too bad. Um, you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be here. Also, deals fix that, will you? All right, let's sneak our way onto the runway. And we'll go ahead and pull ourselves over. There's a nice short runway. I like this runway. There we go. Looks good. We'll tap on the landing light just to let everybody know that we're about to get going. Ah, uh, panel. <laughs> Panic. All right, one last little check to make sure everything's good. We'll give our controls the old windshield wiper here. Make sure it's all nice and smooth. Nothing's binding, nothing's catching. Mixture set. Right, camera, and action. We'll smoothly apply almost full throttle. They're probably saying, why are you not doing full throttle? Well, unfortunately, we have a limitation of 2,700 RPM. Full throttle easily gets you past that number. I don't know if it's supposed to do that, but it does. Get going. I like to pull the nose up just a little bit when you get to about 55. And you want to hold it gently down. This aircraft is deceptively underpowered. Looks pretty good right there. I'll go ahead and bring up that notch of flaps. Take my head up a little bit. And we'll just enjoy a nice relaxing climb just like this. So this aircraft does climb, believe it or not. And uh, one of the nice things about it is the designer chose to put all the critical speeds you'd ever need right here. So you can see our VY speed would be 65 knots, for example. So I'm going to pull the nose up just a little bit, and that gets us 65 knots on the nose. Well, 65 knots in the airspeed indicator anyway. And there's the lovely Bay Bridge for those of you who are curious where I am. And now this aircraft otherwise handles fairly conventionally. Like I said, I find it to be a little on the slow side as far as performance goes. Uh, when we do get up a little more altitude and we do level off, you'd be very surprised how little power you have to apply to get this thing to basically exceed its max speed. One thing you do have to be mindful of, though, is if you look down there, you can already see I'm passing into the red line of the engine. So every once in a while, just take a quick glance at the tachometer and make sure you're not redlining anything dangerously. All right, moving on up here and get a nice little pass of, like I said, Whiskey 2-Niner is the name of that little airport right there. And we're just going to head south along the coast here. There we go. Like I said, about 60, 65. It seems to be a pretty healthy speed. You start hearing meep meeps. Uh, this aircraft has a really bad region of reversal. Uh, once you find yourself in it, it becomes very, very, very difficult to get out of it. I don't know what it is about the design, but it just gets very draggy. Uh, one of the things that actually really surprises me, if you look out on the wingtips, you can see we have vortex generators. Those are those funky little triangly things right there. That should be helping us out, but... Like I said, much be just a much heavier airplane than it appears. And the other thing I appreciate is the fact that our two companions don't get ricocheted around the cabin when you push the controls down. It's kind of a nice touch because that kitty cat would start floating as soon as I push down like that. <laughs> One of the interesting things with this aircraft is because of its ducted fan, which is what you see in the back there, it is supposed to be a very, very, very quiet aircraft. I, like, I find it's definitely chill. I don't know that I would necessarily call it quiet, though. All right, 1,200 feet. I think that'll be our final cruise altitude here. And we're just going to let the nose fall nice and gently, just like that. And I'm going to pull the throttle back out of the yellow into the green, right about there. Thing at the moment to settle. And then we'll go ahead and set the autopilot up. Autopilot is conventional in this particular one. Now we're going to set it right over to altitude hold mode. It's going to latch on to that. If we want to set a specific heading, we're just going to come here with this heading bug and we're just going to set the specific heading that we want to do here. In this case, we're going to hold uh, more or less south. There we are. Press heading hold. Make sure autopilot is on with this little AP in a square, and the aircraft will immediately start flying itself. So as we're cruising here, like I said, we have to be kind of careful with our power settings. If you take a look right now, I am just crossing into the yellow region, and I'm not even at full power here. So I'm actually going to have to reduce my RPM even more here to about 2400 to try to keep this out of the yellow region where we could potentially damage the aircraft. 
Now, some of you are probably like, well, this is pretty straightforward so far. Uh, what if you want to go really fast? Well, you could. I mean, uh, as far as I can tell, you can jam the throttle all the way forward. You will pick up speed actually pretty darn quick. Like I said, this thing is a little faster than I thought it was. If you, you know, completely ignore this gigantic sign that says you're not supposed to exceed this particular engine RPM, you can actually easily get this thing up to 130, 140 if that's what your goal is. But again, it wasn't supposed to be used that way. <laughs> You get the difference between the flight simulator and the real world kind of thing. So go ahead and pull this right back down to that previous RPM of about 2,400. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be landing at our lovely, lovely, lovely grass strip. I'm making things that kind of interesting for us. Oh boy, look at that. I was like flying by these kind of things and going, are you kidding me? <laughs> so the landing of this aircraft is uh, relatively straightforward, unfortunately. Like I said, there's not a lot of unusualness to it. With the one exception that the back wheels are so far away from you, again, not a 737 or anything like that distance, but because the back wheels are so far away, you're going to have a weird nose attitude, especially because you have nothing like in front of you to kind of make you go, oh God, is this the right spot? I'm at the right angle. The other nice thing that we have with this aircraft is spectacular flaps. So they really, really will slow you down quickly. All right, and there's our grass strip. I'm gonna go ahead and start popping the flaps down once I get into the white region. There they are. You have a lot of notches of flaps. Uh, once the flaps are all the way down, uh, you're gonna get a very, very strong, very, very aggressive kind of nose down action. I find the safest approach speed is gonna be somewhere around 57, 58. Maybe even 60 kind of on a high day, but again, it depends sort of on, you know, you're trying to do an ultra short field. On uh, the research that I was doing for this aircraft, you know, watching people fly it in the real world, you basically land the last 50 feet with a stall warning. <laughs> so I find that kind of interesting, but like I said, I'm gonna try not be, to be too aggressive with that. There we go, about 60 knots, feels pretty good. This is an aircraft where you wanna go mostly idle with the engine. I wouldn't pull it all the way to zero when you're coming in. I would pull it to like, let's say 5%, uh, 10% maximum. That seems to give you a little more control. Getting a little fast. Let's pull that nose up, suck some of that energy out. There's a good speed right there. All right, we're gonna start pulling the power back. Nose up. We're gonna float a little bit. We got just a little bit too much speed here. There's the stall warning. Give it a couple RPM and we're down. I'm gonna go ahead and hold the nose back a little bit because I don't want to uh, cause too much pressure because we are on grass here and you definitely don't want to go bam on the nose. That will cause uh, quite a bit of damage to your aircraft. All right, pull the yoke all the way back and that'll keep us uh, nice and safe. So as you can see, this is a pretty easy to fly aircraft. Like I said, not a lot of trauma. You have your basic you know, navigation equipment on here. You have your basic equipment for the uh, purposes of automatic pilot. And you've got these cute little animals that can fly around with you. But other than that, uh, shutdowns are relatively straightforward. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to make sure avionics are off. In this case, so we don't have an option for that. But what we can do, believe it or not, is you can do one of these, which is a quick and easy way to do that. Then you can pull the mixture all the way to zero. Uh, once the mixture has been set all the way to zero, just reach above your head, click the key to all the way to the off position and enjoy your day. And you too, enjoy.